If you were to give Andrew Yang advice as a New Yorker yourself, and you're like, hey, you might not even make my top five, what advice would you give him to earn a spot on your top five? So first things first, he needs to get behind defunding the police pretty fucking quickly. Because right now he's actually advocating for more policing in New York City. And New York has already said this does not work. We had de Blasio try that with the stop and frisk, or I'm sorry, Bloomberg try that with the stop and frisk. Mm -hmm. We had de Blasio try like to get on the cops good side. That didn't work. We have NYPD officers running over protesters with their vehicles in New York fucking city. We have officers choking out citizens over loose cigarettes. Like we need to rein in the NYPD because if you look at the NYPD budget, It infuriates me that this is even a fact. If you look at the NYPD budget, just as a budget on a whole, they are better funded than other, some countries full military. Yeah. Yeah. How is it that we have more funding for the NYPD than some people, some countries full GDP? That makes no sense. And we should not have a militarized NYP, like we shouldn't have a militarized police force when crime has been steadily decreasing for years. And isn't, we like have 10 billion, isn't like ten billion dollars the budget? Something like ten billion, something our like that. Annual budget for our New York City police office. Their operating budget is ten million out of the city's budget. No, no, and billion. That's just ten billion with billion. a billion. Yes, billion. With a B out mm. of our city's budget. And that is not counting any overtime. That is just their operating budget. And they consistently go over their operating budget so much so that their actual functional budget is 60 billion a year. Six zero. Six zero. Holy shit. My second thing, prioritize ending homelessness. Mm. Period. Prioritize ending homelessness because it is a serious fucking problem in New York City that is being swept under the rug consistently. Mm -hmm. Um, And if we end homelessness in New York City, which if part of his uh, UBI proposal would absolutely, if he, like I said, if he focus it down to 100,000 instead of 500,000, you can now offer the lowest income people in New York, which is all of the, which would fully encapsulate all of the homeless people, but also a huge chunk of the disabled people, Mm -hmm. um, the disabled population in our city, right? So if you are able to encapsulate both of those demographics and make sure that all of those people are fully housed and have enough money to put food on the table and make sure there's always a roof over their head, then those people become just as productive as everyone else in our fucking mm-hmm. society. It feeds back into the taxes of New York City. It decreases the need for police overall, and it allows for a bigger budget for UBI because now those people won't need full assistance and you can now distribute it to more people who are in need of assistance because if yeah. they are making enough money, their taxes are not now contributing back to a larger UBI system. Yeah, you can reallocate the funds for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so homelessness, defund the police, and what's the third Mm -hmm. magic uh, thing here? The third magic thing? Leave our churro vendors alone. (laughs) Like, he was out here trying to talk about unlicensed vendors. Okay, Unlicensed vendors means the people who like when we have festivals in New York, right? Like anytime there's a parade, there's always someone with a cooler selling nutcrackers, selling like that's our unlicensed vendors. So you're cracking down on those people. You're cracking down on Nana who's sitting at her subway stop selling her churros, selling her fresh cut mangoes. You're cracking down on food carts. Okay. Like, food carts that are selling vegetables that are selling like fruits and stuff. Okay. These are the unlicensed vendors that you're going after. And those are again, disproportionately people of color as a fourth point. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for sure. Desegregate our schools. <laughs> Just we have the most segregated school system in the country. Okay. Flat out New York city, though we are the liberal bastion that everyone turns to 
we have the most segregated school system in the country. And the fact that we have kids who are growing up in New York fucking city who are not being exposed to people of color because of the way that their school has been segregated. We have kids auditioning to get into high school and like their grades and their income don't line up to get into the school, like their first choice school as though this is college. That is not, that's this, our school system is completely fucked from the ground up and mm. it needs to be revamped. So if we fix our school system, we have a whole new generation of educated New Yorkers who can then go into New York politics and continue the cycle of fixing this. But mm. if we have New Yorkers who are growing up thinking it's perfectly okay to segregate myself away from people of color because the poors can't afford to hang out with us or the whatever can't afford to like be in our school. Oh, they're not smart enough to be with us. Like, yeah, it's classism. Yeah. It needs to stop. Mm. Like since it's ranked choice voting, like I really wish that like, Yang would talk to Diane more and really have more of a connection with her because um, he has a really large base and she has an incredible team of actual like native New Yorkers behind her mm -hmm. who like her senior policy advisor helped AOC get into office. So like the, when I tell you like she has an amazing team behind her who is, they are actively on the ground trying to be as progressive as possible, trying to do everything they can to make this city thrive. I feel like Yang has so much potential to help pull everyone else into that exact thing. And I know that he has that drive behind him to do exactly that. Um, and I, I want to see more of that from him, more mm. like connection with on the ground New Yorkers.